Good morning and happy Easter. If anyone is visiting, it would be wonderful if you would sign the guest book in the narthex as you leave. The bells were beautiful, thank you. There are a couple of announcements um, in, the, um, in the bulletin that uh, you should take note of. Interesting service next Sunday across the lake. And um, don't forget the fair in July. Have the light and the word brought into the sanctuary for worship. stand for the call to worship. After nights of deep darkness, we come in search of something. We come in search of the living one. We come with eyes open to the dark emptiness of the tomb. We come with ears turned to hear the angel proclamation. Christ is not here, for he is risen. Christ is risen indeed. The opening hymn is number 244, Easter Song. Please remain standing for the invocation. Lord God of heaven and earth, creator of our world and everything in it, yet as close to us as our own breath, holy is your name. In you we live and move and have our being. We are your own children, the work of your hands. We pray that your Holy Spirit would move among us as we worship, opening our eyes to your presence, opening our ears to your word. Receive the worship of our hearts and minds and bodies. May it be a pleasing offering to you. We pray in the name of your Son, 
our Savior, Jesus Christ, in whose death and resurrection we find life. And now we pray together with the words he taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. be seated. The Old Testament reading this morning is Psalm 100, which is on page 500 in your pew Bible if you choose to read along. Shout with joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him singing with joy. Acknowledge that the Lord is God. He made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good. His unfailing love continues forever and his faithfulness continues to each generation. May God bless the reading of these words. Good morning. Good morning. And a very happy Easter and welcome to those visitors who are with us today. We're glad you, you're able to join us today. And uh, I hope you all had, had a good week. I, um, I offered a challenge as I, as, as I shared this morning in the Lakeside service. Um, that uh, to take Saturday and take some moments and to think about, you know, uh, with Holy Saturday, we think about uh, Christ in the tomb, but we think about what it would be a moment or a day without Jesus, and that's a time of reflection. And I have to admit, as I was thinking about that yesterday, I couldn't imagine it. I couldn't imagine my life, not even a moment without Christ. And that's what we come to today. We celebrate who God is in our lives, the hope that we have in him and uh, his resurrection. So as we come together, um, we welcome you this morning as we come to worship the Lord.
during this worship service and we pause to give back to you. We ask that you would continue to use these gifts, Lord, that we give back for the work of this church, the community, and throughout the world. And we do so in perfect trust, knowing that you are our provision and you will do so. In Jesus' name, amen. As we continue our worship, I'd invite you to sing with me, Christ the Lord is Risen Today, number 234.
Amen. Please be seated. Well, Abigail in a, was in a preaching, teaching class, and uh, so I, took my, I just took my jacket off, and I was thinking about what she said last week. It's okay to be comfortable, so um, that's why I have my sandals on, too. So, um, so her professor told her that, so I'm going to remember that. So. <laughs> well, it, it is good, once again, to be here, and uh, the resurrection of Jesus and our lives you know, with Christ through relationship, they, they, they teach us different things, and we, we see different things through, and um, this is, I think, my seventh Easter message with you all, and um, you, you think about what to say, and uh, I kind of had two sermons this morning. The lakeside service, sometimes I, I kind of mesh them together and give a little teaser. And um, if you were at the lakeside service, we talked about the importance of the resurrection giving us um, giving us joy once again, restoring our joy. But a few weeks ago, um, when I was actually in the, the garden of Gethsemane, um, I was in Israel uh, just a few weeks back, um, our identity in Christ really struck me. Um, and this verse in Peter, um, as I was there and we had communion and we were at the, the garden tomb later, um, the identity that we have um, was something that I just wanted to share a few moments on. These two verses just entered my heart as uh, as we were in the Holy Land. So 1 Peter 2, 9 to 10, it says this, but you are not like that for you are a chosen people. You are royal priests, a holy nation, God's very own possession. As a result, you can show others the goodness of God. For he called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you had no identity as people and now you are God's people. Once you received no mercy, now you have received God's mercy. Identity, showing God's goodness, and receiving God's mercy is what the message is today. Father God, we thank you for your words and your teaching. And Lord, just for the moments that we have to come together, Lord, to remember to remember what Easter is truly about. Lord, to come together as a church family, to celebrate, to smell these beautiful spring flowers. And Lord, just to be together with friends and family, that's what today is about, Lord. Just to, It's all about you, and we give you thanks. We celebrate, and we come together. Lord, the words that you put on my heart to share today, I ask that they'd not come from Kevin, but they'd come from you, and they'd fall on ears that need to hear. Lord, and as we go out these doors, it's not just a message for Sunday morning, but it's a message that resonates within our hearts, within our lives. And Lord, we truly remember the gift of life and hope that you give us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Easter morning. He is risen. He is risen indeed. The celebration of the resurrection is truly the central part of the life of the church. Each year we remember that Jesus walked the earth. He ministered and ultimately paid the sacrifice for our sins. But Jesus was resurrected. So we may have life and we may have hope in him. I shared a story in the April Visitor, the newsletter that we have, that I wanted to share with you this morning. If you didn't have a chance to read it, here it is. Many years ago, an older Scottish woman went from home to home across the countryside selling thread, buttons, and shoestrings. And when she'd come to an unmarked crossroad, so she can go left or right, she would toss a stick in the air and go in the direction that the stick pointed as it landed. Well, one day, however, she was seen taking the stick and tossing it up in the air over and over and over again. And someone approached her and said, why do you throw that stick in the air more than once? She said, because it keeps pointing to the left and I want to take the right path. So <laughs> then she continued to throw the stick in the air until it pointed the way that she wanted to go. <laughs> so much for chance, right? <laughs> but when we come to a crossroads, it's not by chance the direction that we go through life. We faithfully step forward each step of the way and we trust God. And sometimes even following and trusting may take us on a different path. And this step forward on the path is called something faith. In the journey of faith, we trust in God. We believe in God, the Son. And we follow the discernment of the Holy Spirit. We have the Trinity who guides us. The Holy Spirit 
guides us in our decision making. Our faith is deeply rooted in our identity as children of God. We know who we are in the faith journey, children of God, and we look to the Lord for direction in our lives. Our identity and direction sometimes are challenged and perhaps more today than ever before. Uh, Pastor Dale shared a few weeks ago some stories, and I love when Pastor Dale comes because he's all about stories. I don't know if he got chickens in, but usually he tells chicken stories. But, um, but the, one, the one that I heard is that we may need to minister and serve in different and new ways. He shared a story about a church that in the wee hours of the morning, they opened up their bathroom because a bar had let out. And you know, sometimes we might have to look at simple ways is the way by meeting people where they're at. Again, ministering the truth of the gospel in love. Truly seeing people and ministering to the needs as we see them, as Christ did. And remember through the scriptures, constantly we see that Jesus saw, we read that, that Jesus had eyes open to minister. Jesus saw, dot, dot, dot. We see that. Last week, I shared a statistic from the Barna Group as it relates to Easter only 42% of American adults link Easter with the resurrection of Jesus. The real meaning, 42%. The specifics of Easter are waning for many. Well, following God requires a choice at the crossroad to follow God, one of us that each, a choice that each of us make. Then we go down the path in a committed way to follow. And as we're on the journey, we would do well to dwell on these things that we see in the verses. First, to remember our, our identity as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved. And then the importance of showing our goodness, the goodness of God to others. Not our goodness, but his goodness. And then the importance of receiving mercy. And there's some blocks and hindrances I'll, I'll touch on just in a moment. But first, the resurrection and the Easter resurrection reminds us of our identity as God's chosen people. We see in 1 Peter 2.9 that we are a chosen people. And the first, first Peter is a powerful letter written by the Apostle Peter to the Christians, reminding Christians then and today that we are chosen by God and we have hope in God. The main theme of the book, it centers around the atonement of Christ and how followers of the teaching of Christ, disciples, will faithfully endure as we step forward. Peter, as we know, was originally called Simon and was one of the 12 apostles. He and his brother Andrew joined Jesus very early in the ministry and were with Jesus until his death. Peter, as we know, he was the passionate follower of Jesus, but he was also the one that denied that he knew Christ three times. Peter sees his wrong when the rooster crows and he weeps. And after the resurrection in John 21, there's more to the story. Peter and Jesus, they speak again and he finds reconciliation with Christ. Peter reminds us that we're chosen by God. Our identity is in Christ. And our identity in Christ is a function of our relationship with God. Who we are as children of God is about the relationship, being chosen by God and following. We are a new creation in Christ. The old is gone and the new has come. Galatians 2.20 reminds us that the old self has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in us. So we live with this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Galatians 2, 20. Remembering that Christ lives in us means that we don't have to live with regret looking back. We don't have to be burdened with the wrongs. We turn from them, we confess them, and in God's forgiveness we find a sweet peace. There's a quote that relates on the darkest days when I feel inadequate, unloved and unworthy. I remember whose daughter or son I am and I straighten my crown. <laughs> you prince and princesses, you're children of the king. You are chosen and holy and dearly loved by God. 
Secondly, the Easter resurrection reminds us of good things. To show goodness. 1 Peter 2.9 continues, As a result of your identity in Christ, there's applicability. It says, You can show others the goodness of God, for he called you out of darkness into light. When we know our identity in God, we become firm in who we are. And we're able to show others the goodness of God. And this is where God's light shines. We show the goodness of God when we experience who God is. And the goodness of God is a divine attribute. Goodness is described as God's essential character. It means that the Lord is good and not evil. And we see the evidence of God's goodness through creation. The sun, it rises every day. Even on cloudy days, the sun's still there. The rain falls, the flowers bloom, the grass grows. We see God through our creation. God's faithfulness, his kindness, and gentleness are freely given to each of us. Jesus came because he wanted to save us. He died because he was willing. And mercy is an essential part of God's forgiveness and his goodness. Psalm 23 is a familiar psalm. And verse 6 says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow thee all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Uh, verse 6 of Psalm 23 is a send-off. It's the verse in Psalm 23. It works as a conclusion or a benediction. God's goodness and mercy follow us. The word follow, redap, in the Hebrew meaning means to pursue or run after. Goodness shows God's presence. And even deeper, his goodness, it runs after us. That's exciting. When we allow God to be our shepherd, we have assurance that the Lord protects us, watches over us, and he cares for us. And God is good all the time. And when we remember that God is good, then we show God's goodness. Knowing that we are loved by God, chosen by God, the question is, how do we show that goodness? Well, we show God's love. We show God's love through listening. While social media has increased communication, it also gives a false appearance of true connection and real relationships. As a camp guy, I always have to say that to you. Get off your social media and get out there in the woods. But although social media has increased communication, it's given that false appearance. And Generation Z, I'm not gonna beat up too much, but this is important for you to know that 97, if born in from 97 to 2012, who are the most connected, are also considered the loneliest generation. And, and that's not to beat up on them, that's for us to cry out and reach out and love on them for that. We show God's love by listening. We also show God's love through generosity. The cool thing about generosity is God instituted generosity today as we celebrate. For God so loved the world that he gave. We think of gen generosity often in times of finances. But really, how can we be generous with our time, with our talents, with all that we have, and we honor God with all that we have? God's love shows generosity. We can also show God's love through encouragement. Encouragement is simply lifting someone's burdens. Encouragement means to make strong. Speak life into someone through an encouraging word. Fourth, we can show God's love through an act of kindness. 1 Corinthians 13.5 reminds us that love is not self-seeking. An act of kindness puts someone else before us. The banner last week, which is hanging in my office, welcome back, Pastor Kevin and family. It really touched my heart, that kind act. The thought, the time, and the warm welcome back was kind, and it carried me through the week. As I said, I went into my office, and I think Tracy and Nikki hung it up in there, so I looked at it. He showed God's love through kindness. When we listen and act generously and offer encouragement and kindness, it not only lifts the receiver up, but it also fills the giver as well. The Easter resurrection reminds us to show others the goodness of God. Lastly, 
The resurrection of Easter reminds us that we have received God's mercy. 2 Peter 2.10, the second verse. Once you had no identity as a people, but now you're God's people. Once you had no mercy, but now you've received God's mercy. The resurrection of Jesus Christ, it gives us identity. It reminds us that God is good and we are to show that goodness of God. And also we are to receive God's mercy. Mercy means that even though we may deserve to be punished, we're not punished. And just the opposite, God blesses us instead. We receive God's mercy when we release, when we cast off the hindrances that block receiving his mercy. Hindrances like self-condemnation, saying, mm, I, I'm not good enough to receive the mercy of God. Or the opposite, self-righteous, I'm too good, I don't need it. <laughs> or thirdly, the failure to give mercy to someone will block receiving the mercy from God. To receive God's mercy, it's important not to live in regret, hubris, which is excessive pride, or bitterness. God is not these things, so we have to cling to what is good. When we forgive the offenses and the offenders, and sometimes the offender is ourself, we have to forgive ourselves and not live in regret. When we do that, we become set free. Romans 12, 9 talks about clinging to what is good. And it's a good recipe for goodness and mercy for ourselves and for others. It says this, don't just pretend to love others, really love them. Hate what is wrong, hold tightly, cling to what is good. Love each other with genuine affection and take delight in honoring each other. Never be lazy, but work hard and serve the Lord enthusiastically. Rejoice in our confident hope, be patient in trouble, and keep on praying. And when God's people are in need, be ready to help them. Always be eager to practice hospitality. That's Romans 12, 9, if you want to read it a couple times this week. It's good stuff. You are a child of God. Your identity is in Christ. Remember that this Easter Sunday. Listen, be generous, offer encouragement, act and show kindness, receive mercy and show mercy. He is risen. He's risen. He's risen. Amen. Father God, we thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you that you are the stability in our lives that we can stand on. And although life is tough, we thank you for grabbing our hand along the way and helping us when we take moments to quiet ourselves. Lord, as we look forward, give us moments of, of freedom from distraction. Let us find quiet moments to meditate on you, to meditate on your goodness and who you are in our lives. Lord, we thank you that you live and we thank you for the relationship we have with you. Be with us now as we go from here in Jesus' name. Amen. I'd invite us to stand as we sing together our closing hymn, Christ Arose, number 235.
thank you for taking the time to join us and a very happy Easter to each of you. Um, for all the behind the scenes things this week, Hannah, three bulletins, readers that came to the Monday, Thursday service and read, thank you. Peggy, the beautiful music, bells. Nikki and Anna for getting up very early this morning. Um, you think it's tough to get to the Easter service? Try putting a tube, uh, a trumpet, a trumpet on your lips at seven o'clock. So thank you, honestly, and to Anna. Um, we have fellowship today, but not downstairs. So fellowship with one another. Um, go out and just enjoy one another. Um, the benediction, it's the priestly blessing, and it comes from Numbers. May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile upon you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord show his favor and give you his peace. Go in his peace today. Please be seated as the light and the word are taken out of the sanctuary and brought out into the community.